Now you're making sure it's recording, right? Yes. Is it? Yes. Okay. Well, this is awkward. Hopefully, I can edit that out. I probably can't. <laughs> so I just look. So yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. The topic for today will be nonlinear functions. I like how you guys don't even open your notebook until I start writing something on the board, even though you know I'm going to say something. Uh, now, for nonlinear functions, we're talking about functions that are not lines whenever we graph them. So it's going to be a little bit different for us, but it's still going to be okay. Now, the first guy that we're going to see is what's called the squaring function. Now, the things that we see here will be the same things that you're going to see in college algebra. We're going to do more now than we have to do so that when you take college algebra, you're going to be totally okay with that. So the squaring function does exactly what you think it would do. It squares your input values. So no matter what I plug into this, I'm going to square it. Now I know that we can go through, we can make, I can ask you to evaluate this guy, plug in any number that you want to. But I want us to look at this in terms of graphing. How does it look when I graph this guy? So to get an idea about what this looks like, maybe we should make a t-table of values. Uh, when you don't know what something looks like, make a t-table, plug in a bunch of numbers, and when you have a lot of points, it starts to form a shape. Okay? And then you just kind of play connect the dots with it. Bless you. Of course, because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> so let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're just going to plug them into this function. So if I plug in negative 2, what do I get? And when I say y, I guess I really should be writing y. y is the same thing as saying what here? Isn't that the same thing as saying f of x? Right? What? Well, this is just what we did yesterday. The function notation was, instead of writing y, we're going to write f of x. Because y depends on what we say for x, right? So instead of saying y now, we're going to say f of x because we may have a lot of different functions. And even when you put things in your graph and calculate, you have to have it solved for y. Right. Right? And so we're using f of x now. And you're going, to be, you're going to keep using this forever. So if I plug in negative 2, what do I get for my y? Or what do I get for my function value? I get 4. If I plug in negative 1, what do I get? And then what? Keep going. Zero, one, and then four. Well, not two. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. And what are you going to do with these points? You're going to plot them, right? Well, when you plot these guys, we've got negative two, positive four is right here. Negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, four. It's a what? A parabola? That's a fancy word. Sure it is. It's a fancy word. <laughs> We're going to have a shape that's called a parabola. Make sure, you, make sure you pronounce that correctly. It's parabola, not parabola. Okay. Now you can make it sound more exotic and, you know. It all sounds exotic. It sounds stupid. <laughs> no, no. You make it sound exotic. You say still recording, all right? You can call it a parabola. Trill the R. Parabola. <laughs> we're not going to go there. Now, if I keep going here, if I plug in three, what do I get? Nine. I, I get nine, so plug in 3, I get 9, so I get this order pair here. If I were to plug in negative 3, I'm going to get this guy. So I've got a lot of points here. I just have to draw my shape correctly. Now, you know that whenever you're playing connect the dots as a child, you didn't just go segment, 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 segment. Right? You try to smooth it out. Isn't that what you would do so it would look pretty and not ridiculous? So we're going to do that. We're going to make a nice, smooth curve. I always like to start here at this bottom point. Does anybody know what this bottom point's called? What is this guy? 
is looking at the origin. No. In terms of the parabola, in terms of the graph, do you remember what it's called? It's called the vertex. Oh, vertex. This is the vertex. Okay. So, graph this guy. We're gonna make this guy nice and pretty. Of course, put your arrows at the end because we're not stopping at that point. We're gonna go through that guy, and we're just kind of copy it back over here on the other side. Please draw your parabola correctly. Okay? This is a what? This is a function, which means it has to pass the vertical line, the vertical line test. Make sure you speak up loudly enough so that we can get you recorded and you can be YouTube stars. So it has to pass the vertical line test. So is this guy going to pass the vertical line test as I go across here? Yes. Yes. So that it does pass the vertical line test, you have to make sure that your graphs also pass the vertical line test. Do not do this. Okay, there are my points, and... <laughs> Don't do this. If you're not sure about whether or not you should do this, crazy eyes will come get you. Oh, don't oh. put that on. <laughs> now, don't do this. And they're like, oh, Mr. Craig, I would never do that. I would just do this. <laughs> See? It's not going completely vertical. Yeah, but you are also failing the vertical line test. And when you fail the vertical line test, you're also going to fail. Period. Yeah. There you go. Fail the test. So don't do this. That's bad. It keeps opening up and out as you grab this guy. All right. Now, I know what you're thinking, Mr. Craig, how do we know that what you have here is even correct? <laughs> you're funny. You know what? I've got this fantastic program here called Winplot. It's free to download. We're going to talk about that later. I can graph this guy. Now, you have explicit and you have implicit. Explicit is great for us because it's y equals f of x. So just what you would see in your graphing calculator. So I can type in x squared. You have two ways of doing this. I'm just going to type in xx. xx is good enough. It understands that as x squared. I can also say x. Do that caret symbol with shift 6 and 2. That's a lot of button pressing, but I can just type in xx. Make your pin width about 6 or 7. That uh, shows up pretty well. Uh, pin width ranges between 1 and 30 on this program. Color. Uh, well, some graphing in blue. I'll use blue here. And click OK. Watch the map. Isn't that great? You can't even see it, can you? So let me show you. Without the graph, with the graph. Without, with. See? Wow, you're amazing. I know. I know. Just leave that in your comment section below. So what do you guys think about this? Is that that cool? Yes. All right. 